Good morning again. I want to begin this morning by taking just a moment to thank all of those who make worship possible week in and week out, from our office staff and our nursery attendants and those behind the cameras and our tech crew, to our deacons who do so much each week, and to our liturgist today, Duan, and our guest organist, Jeff, who has been filling in quite a bit recently, and of course, our facility maintenance team, who quietly and faithfully and humbly prepare this sacred space for worship each week. It truly takes a village to plan and prepare and lead worship. Would you please pray with me? O oh, Holy One, come to us now through your word and through the words that you place on each of our hearts. And O oh, dear God, may the words that I have to offer here this morning please you and honor you and glorify your holy, holy name. In Jesus' sweet name we pray, amen. Amen. I'd like to begin the sermon time this morning with a brief exercise. I'm going to share some familiar idioms with you and that are part of our everyday language, and I invite you to pay attention to a common theme among these saints. Here's the first one. That Susie. She is just a ray of sunshine. How about this one? Now, don't you go beating around the bush. Just come out with it. Or this one. I admit that there are times that I cannot see the forest through the trees. And another one. Now, be sure to stop by when you are out in my neck of the woods. And the last one, you folks here at First Church are just so down to earth. Did you notice the common theme among all of those sayings? <laughs> Our everyday language and the way that we make meaning and express ourselves are infused with images of nature as well as our personal experiences of Mother Nature or of God's good earth. By now, most of you know that our worship plans and our sermon series recently has been inspired by the litanies and the prayers from this book, God's Good Earth, Praise and Prayers for Creation, written by Anne and Jeffrey Rothorn. Our preachers throughout this sermon series have included Reverend Tim and Reverend Emily and Reverend Heather Giffen and also last Sunday, Dr. Amy Acton. <laughs> that is quite a lineup for me to follow. <laughs> and so this morning, I will offer my reflections on how the language and the images of creation in the Bible inspire and inform and comfort and challenge and sustain us along our spiritual journeys, both as individuals and as a community of faith. Now, in all of Jesus's teachings and storytelling, he certainly used a number of metaphors from nature, didn't he? For instance, he said, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I and you, you will bear much fruit. That's from John chapter 15. And then to his followers on the Sermon of the Mount in Matthew 5. You are the salt of the earth. And then another one from Matthew, 
chapter 13. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. Though it's the smallest of seeds, when it grows, it becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. And then in the Hebrew scriptures, we also find numerous metaphors and similes inspired by nature. We are the clay, and you are potter, from the 64th chapter of Isaiah. And the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, from 2 Samuel. And from Proverbs chapter 13, the teaching of the wise is a fountain of life. Now, keeping all of this in mind, let us now turn to our gospel lesson for this morning, this well-known parable from Luke chapter 14. But first, I want to mention something that I learned in seminary several years ago when I took a class on the gospel of Luke. My New Testament professor, Dr. Powell, Dr. Mark Powell, stressed that Jesus' favorite context for ministry surely must have been sitting around the table and sharing a meal with others. Just in Luke alone, there are at least 17 stories or references to Jesus breaking bread with others. And so here in this story, from chapter 14, where do we find Jesus? Well, he's at the table, of course. And this time, he's sharing a meal with the Pharisees, who, as you may recall, were the esteemed religious leaders of the day. And then Jesus tells a parable. And what do you suppose the context of the parable is that Jesus teaches them? <laughs> Why, it's about a meal, of course. And so in our pericope for today, Jesus shares this story about a wedding banquet. Now, the point of the parable about the wedding banquet was to discourage them, the, the Pharisees, from seeking the most prestigious places at the table in order to avoid the humiliating situation of being displaced by someone of even greater prominence. And so, instead, Jesus instructs the Pharisees to always seek the lowest place that they might be elevated to a more honorable seat by their host. And then, Jesus offers them and all of us today these words to remember. For all who exalt themselves will be humble, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. But that's not all. As if learning humility were not difficult enough, Jesus then adds a second admonition to those who had gathered for this Sabbath meal. And he further instructed them by saying, when you host a party, do not invite someone in expectation that they can pay you back. Rather, Jesus said, invite the poor and the crippled and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. In our text for today, just as it is throughout the book of Luke, we are given yet another story in which Jesus takes the social and cultural norms of the day and the conventional wisdom of that time, and he turns it all on its head by describing a new way, 
a new way of being in relationship with one another and a new way of being community together. And so, it is in this upside-down kingdom of God where the first shall be last and the last shall be first and where the proud are humbled and the lowly are exalted. Our lesson from Luke this morning is certainly humbling as it seeks to strip away all that is fleeting and superficial in our lives and in the world around us. In our text for today, we find grounding as Jesus calls us back to our roots and back to what is lasting and true. The Reverend Dr. Diana Butler Bass, as you may know, is an award-winning author and preacher and theologian. And she's written several books on religion and culture, including a book called Grounded, Finding God in the World, a Spiritual Revol Revolution. In this book, Butler Bass implores us to seek the sacred in our everyday lives through humility and heightened awareness that all of life is interconnected. And so this morning, I'd like to close with some of Butler Bass's words of wisdom. She writes, God is the ground and the grounding that which grounds us. We experience this when we understand that soil is holy and water gives life and the sky opens the imagination and our roots matter and home is a divine place, and our lives are linked with our neighbors and with all of those around the globe. This world, not heaven, is the sacred stage of our lives and of our times and of now. Again. God is the ground, the grounding, and that which grounds us. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>